Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a wonderful evening of theater and picking up after yourselves. <coughs> now, a tribute to our lesser-known Marvel legends. We are the Mediocre Legends. You won't find our faces on any top tens. There's Richard. And Doc Ock. And Armored Spidey, too. We've even got black costume storm. I don't know what to do. We are the adequate, forgettable, occasionally regrettable, caretaker figures of 20. 20. Hello, Marvel Legends. Well, 2021 is in the books, in the pocket, out of sight. And with it, all of the top 10 best figure lists are in the books, in the pocket, out of sight. But there was one thing that I thought I hasn't been covered, and that is the top 10 unsung heroes of 2021. The figures that were good but not great. Because understandably, with, with top tens, of course, there's going to be a lot of repeats in, in the figures because a lot of people will recognize the same levels of quality. But what about the figures that were good, but not great, but I feel were unsung heroes that deserve a little bit of extra recognition? Basically, the, the figures that did a good job, that were kind of mediocre, but still like got a special place in my heart. So these are the top 10 unsung heroes of 2021, starting with... You, you might go, what? <laughs> Super Skrull, Reed Richards. This figure, when announced and, and shown and previewed, such a disappointment, I think. And everyone agreed. Like, you see the Walgreens, Mr. Fantastic, and he's got the stretchy arms, and you can pop them on and off, and he's got the ultimate nullifier, and it's like, come on. Like, we want that for this one, but... Now that I have that one, <laughs> so it's all right for me, I can appreciate what this figure has. And what he has is a fantastic Reed Richards head sculpt. I love the bearded head sculpt look with his slightly cocked eyebrow, the little salt and pepper going on with the beard. I think it's a really good expressive face. Add to that, like the, the stretchy fingers are kind of odd, but at the same time, it's fun to have him displaying his powers in a way that doesn't dominate whatever shelf he's on. You know, I, I, I can put him and put characters around him without him just like gangly taking up all of the room. Add to that, I love the detailing on his boots. It's such a silly little thing, but actually having some tread on the boots and having it kind of come up over the toes, I think it looks great. It's just something I wasn't expecting, but now that I have it, I'm like, yes, yes, that looks cool. And then you've got the blue piping sort of detail on the back of the Fantastic Four costume. I think, you know, all four team members together, they look so good. I'm really, really pleased with, with, with these. So he doesn't set anyone's world on fire. But for me, I think that Reed Richards is an, is an unsung hero of 2021. Coming in next from the Spider-Man retro wave, we have Gwen Stacy. Okay, now this is a figure, maybe not that unsung because a lot of people accept this is a really good figure, but in top tens and whatnot, she tends to get overlooked because there are so many other like great eye popping figures from the retro Spider-Man wave. But look, this is the first Gwen Stacy we've had. It's a really good use of kind of the basic female body with the lovely soft, soft plastic uh, coat. She's got the, the, the book, the folder and the Daily Bugle, so some lovely accessories. Plus she's got the Mary Jane head, which at the moment is sitting in my fodder box because it would look weird to have Mary Jane wearing exactly what Gwen Stacy always wears. But when we get the, what's her name, Moira McTaggart. When we get Moira McTaggart coming out, that body is perfect. She's wearing like retro 60s looking clothes. Pop the MJ head on that, and that's going to go terrifically. But then this Gwen, again, she she's considered to be a good figure. Like, no one's denying that. But with the top tens, people tend to go, myself included, with the bigger, brighter, more classic, not classic, but more standout characters. So I figure for this list, Gwen deserves some recognition. 
Taking it now to the Avengers wave, we have Jocasta here. And again, a figure that was appreciated, but not that much. And I can see why. There's there's not too much going on with, you know, uh, additional extras or anything like that. She has some different hands or a different hand. That, that's about it. But as a figure, I the more I see her on my shelf, the more I'm like, yes. This is good. I like this. And I've never even read an appearance with Jocasta, but the fact that we've got a crazy looking sci-fi, curvaceous robot silver woman, it's just badass. I, I love that with her kind of red eyes and what looks like almost like sort of Egyptian looking kind of uh, hair, headdress kind of thing. She looks cool. She makes me want to read Jock Astor's story. So I've had recommended to me the Marvel Zombies story with her and Machine Man, because I've got, I've got them paired up together on the shelf. I think this, this figure just deserves not like, you know, a huge amount of praise. It's not like, oh my god, it's amazing. That's not the point of, the point of this list. This list is, is for the figures that are good, but not great, but definitely deserve a little, hey, well done you. Now we have a figure I was quite torn on. It is the Mark IV Spider Armor Spider-Man. Now it was either down to him or the Velocity Suit. Two characters, designs that are kind of interchangeable. They both fall under the Gamerverse banner. The reason why I go for this one more is because this comic, uh, this figure, or design originated in a comic. God, it's easy for me to say. Yes, this was first introduced not in the Spider-Man game, but in the Ends of the Earth storyline. So because it's got that comic pedigree, I've got more time for it. And the thing is, there's so much going on with this figure. The armor is all sculpted really nicely. You've got like that robotic kind of spine going up the back with the Spider-Man backpack. The backpack that should have been on, now that I think about it, Superior Spider-Man. Superior Spider-Man should have had this backpack for his legs to come out. So let's give us a deluxe Superior, all right? That's my wish for 2021. Ooh, that'll be a good list. 2021 wishes coming sometime this week or next week. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. This figure, again, you've got the Spider-Man helmet design here. It's just really cool and unique. His shoulder pads and the, the, the feet, what lets this figure down? And unfortunately, it's, it's, it's a big letdown, is the lack of any other hands to, to pose with. He just has the thwip and the fist and that's it so that that's all you're getting that that's the pose that there's 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 no wall crawling hands there's no two-fisted hands and the thing is because this is a special spider armor his his hands are quite unique in their design he's got like these kind of knuckle duster type sort of looking uh Knuckles, I guess. So you can't really just like swap out any other hands. So really, this is the only pose that you can really have him in. You can play around with the legs a bit, but again, because of the design of the armor, he's not that kind of, not that flexible to get into what I feel is a good pose. If you can pose him better, send me a picture on, on Instagram. Because uh, if you have a flight stand, maybe you have him like mid-flight, but he just feels a bit static. So that's what kind of lets him down. And the same for Velocity as well. Velocity only has the, the one pair of hands, which means you're limited with your poses. Out of all the characters, Spider-Man should have the most poses, but still, he deserves the recognition. Now we're taking it to the X-Men and the repaints with Black Costume Storm, and this was a real sleeper hit for me because for whatever reason, I just didn't love the white costume Storm. I, I don't know why, but I just got her because it's to complete the 90s X-Men. But I was like, ah, she's a shelf filler for me. But then I had a chance to get a, a cheap-ish black costume Storm, and I was like, yeah, go on. I wanted her because she wore this costume when she teamed up with Ben Riley, and so of course I gotta get that. And now that I have, oh my goodness, changing the costume from white to black just brings out everything. It makes the gold and yellow pop more. The fact that she has blue lightning instead of the uh, yellow lightning makes a big difference, I think. The, the blue lightning just looks so much cooler. When you've got her on the flight stand, you can have it like crackling up her leg like that, going through her body and out of her arm. So badass. Added to the fact that, I, I don't know, because like the, the head, I don't think it's been repainted. It's the same as the white, but for whatever reason, the, the, the black on the body just brings out the details and the features more. You would have thought a white costume would do that, but go figure. So I'm a huge, huge fan. It might just be a repaint, but I feel this definitely deserves some extra recognition. Now we're going to represent the villains with the leader. And all I can say is we love the leader, that being the royal we. Because this figure is another one that's like, he's, he's quite 
quietly a very good figure. I feel. Because, I mean, first of all, again, with the, the terrible lighting here, you can't, actually, it doesn't look too bad. You can get a look at his face, and I feel feel like, like the leader sculpt is just, it, it, he's got that really great contemplative, I had to pronounce that carefully, contemplative look on, on his face. He's sinister, probably evil, but you can't tell entirely. He just looks like a very smart dude thinking about his next plan of action. That's what the leader is. And we needed a new leader. You know, the, the older leader with the broccoli head is kind of fun, but I like this classic leader. And this is how he's appearing in Immortal Hulk at the moment. So that's really, really cool. Of course, zero accessories, which is a real shame because I would want, you know, some kind of like electronic device in his hand or, or a beaker or, you know, some, some kind of chemistry equipment or something. But the fact that he doesn't have any accessories means that I pose him in this, you know, thinker sort of pose. And the thinker pose just works for him very well. He's, the, the hand doesn't quite touch his, his chin, but like that's, that's what we're going for. He's, he's mulling over his next villainous move, plus the fact he's bright orange. So pops off the shelf, which is what we love. With the green head as well, he's, he's got his, I, I, I don't know, S&M club uh, sh straps going around his torso, but whatever floats your boat leader. Uh, he's just, fun. I'm going to pair him up. I, I need to do a dedicated Hulk display. So I can pair him up with, with Hulk and with Abomination, Absorbing Man. That's going to be a really fun setup. I, could, ugh, I just rearranged my display. Now i got to do it again. Coming up next, we got Thunderstrike. You've been Thunderstriked! That doesn't quite work. Anyway, this guy I, I really associate with Rage. They're two obscure 90s Big heavy hitters, and that's something I've loved to see more of the, you know, uh, last year, and I want to see more of the, this year. So Thunderstrike, kind of obscure for anyone who wasn't a 90s reader, but this figure, you know, he's got the wonderful soft jacket that Rage has as well. I say soft, it's soft plastic, but also he, he's got his hammer as well, and apparently he's got it in the wrong hand from what people have told me, is, is that Thunderstrike is supposed to be left-handed, but I'll forgive that. Did they get the name on the box wrong as well? <laughs> a few a, a few rickets in, in this one. But ultimately, the figure itself, I think, is really fun. He's hefty. He's got the metallic paint on, on the armor on, on his chest. That brings that, that out more. He's got some, some of the buttons on his, on, on his jacket painted. If there was some more painting, if the zip was painted and stuff, that would have been nice. But the fact we got, we got the, the, the belt buckle at the bottom there as well. He's got big, hefty, chunky boots. Again, no, no extra detailing on there though. So again, that's what makes him a good figure, but not great, but deserving of recognition. Plus, of course, we've got a great expressive face. And that's what I love. I love characters who are like, ah, of course, would he have been better with a, a, a normal head as well, so you can chop and change depending on what you want? Of course! But that's why he's on this list and not the top 10. Now then, going way back to the start of the year, we have Winter Soldier from the Crimson Dynamo wave. You know, they had those, those movie figures from that, that film we've all forgotten about now. <laughs> I've, hopefully this year we'll get to see uh, Black Widow because I'm sure it's good. It looks it looks really good. I digress though. The Winter Soldier is a figure that is he's almost too good in a way because he feels like in hand he feels like an MCU figure. I think there's maybe some MCU re reuse. I'm not an expert, so help me out. I'm sure people watching this who are would be like, duh, of course it is, or maybe of course it isn't. But like, yeah, he he feels almost too sort of like realistic, like practical, real worldy for some of the more comic booky characters. But I don't mind that because it just sets a nice standard of how detailed a figure could be. He has all the straps and pockets and pouches and they're painted as well. So you've got the different colors for his bandoliers on his legs. You've got the silver on, on his, his belt buckle there, the lovely ridges in his robotic arm and a face that sort of does him justice. It's not the most not the most dynamic looking face in, in the world, but again, like that's why he's on this list and not the top, top, top 10. But the fact that also, you know, he's he's got his, his different guns. I think maybe his holster pistol is sealed in there. Some people hate holstered weapons that you can't take out. I, I'm kind of indifferent, but he's got the machine gun here, which I, I like the design of this, but it looks good from this angle. From this angle, it just looks so skinny. It's so thin, it seems a bit weird. But with the pistol as well, all the extra bits, I got a lot of time for this Bucky Barnes. Now we're gonna take it to the Age of Apocalypse and a figure that I was waiting so long and hoping that we were gonna get, Nate Gray, X-Man. 
big banger 90s nostalgia here for me. And this figure is something, you know, he suffers from the same thing all of the Age of Apocalypse figures does, which is no accessories. But that's kind of, you know, played off by the fact that they got a great bath. Would I rather have more accessories than just buy the bath separately? Yes, yes I would. But you know, that's the world we live in. So the fact that we have a Nate Gray figure at all is fantastic. The fact that actually he's really well sculpted and realized is just the icing on the cake. The face I think is wonderful. I love the sculpted in uh, psychic glow from his left eye. I think that just looks terrific. Cable, you can't see him, but Cable has the, the same one and I think it's just such a great way of doing it. I think it, it just looks the bomb. I'm so happy with that. I've added the shockers blast effects. So, so he's got like his sonic spikes kind of like that he's generating from his hand. That works really well. So that's me cheating a little bit because I gave him an extra accessory. I have him on the flight stand because of course Nate Gray can fly, but also um, he suffers from what a lot of figures this year suffer from, which is the teeny tiny feet. They're so small. I'm like, come on, really? Why? <laughs> What's with the small feet? Give them something to actually balance on. It makes it so difficult. But again, in the flight stand, he looks great. So yeah, big positive thumbs up for Nate Gray. And finally, the number one unsung hero of 2021, I feel, was the superior octopus. Okay, this is a figure who, for me personally, from reading the comics, I, I love this iteration of uh, Doc Ock, all through uh, Superior Spider-Man into Superior Octopus and then back to Superior Spider-Man and then dying and not and coming back. It's, it's a real hodgepodge, but when he was in this uh, Elliot Tolliver identity, I was so into this character. I thought he was great. Such a shame what they've done with him, but that's another story for another video. This figure, did not have to be as good as it was. Actually, this figure didn't have to be at all. I mean, he, he appears for a, a handful of issues. He appears for a cup of coffee in the comics, but they still went, yeah, you know what? Let's go ham on the figure. So they've given him the, 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 the basic body, but it's the one, is it the Sunfire body? I don't know, but it's got great butterfly joints and the torso swivel there. And then his hands have awesome sculpting with his kind of gauntlet style armor on the hands. He's got the goggle type uh, mask and of course his robot limbs, his, his octopus limbs coming out the back here, which of course we would love them to be bendy, but we accept that that's just not the case. You know, it's like, we're not, we're not gonna get bendy wise, especially for ones that, that are, are this thin, but still they, they look cool. They got the pincers on the end and also they're, they're positioned in a style, whoop, <laughs> they just fell off, but that's not a knock on the figure. That's just me not having them connected well enough. Let me just pop those back in there. Cause that's another thumbs up for the figure is that they actually do stay in place perfectly easily. Like once they're clipped in, they're good. I was just fiddling around with them too much. But yeah, uh, what's kind of lacking? Again, no extra hands or anything. It'd be nice to have him. I, I, I like his grabbing hand like this. So two of those to give kind of like a spidery kind of look would be more appealing, but still one, one grabby, one punchy. I can go for, I can go for grabby and punchy. And again, the fact that we have a character, whoop, Timber. The fact that we have a character, psh, play on, uh, who's, who's got this, this uh, luminous green dynamic going on with, with the gray and the black, it, it, it's kind of, kind of unique, kind of different, and I dig that. So him, along with the folks who just fell on my lap and anyone else who fell over there when I just bashed my display case, <laughs> those are the underrated figures, I feel, of 2021. Who do you feel deserved more recognition in 2021? Comment below, let me know. Also, am I an idiot? Did, did, did these figures already get the attention they deserve? Did they not deserve any attention? Are they bad figures? Let me know what you think, because I always love the, the feedback. In the meantime though, guys, thanks for watching. Check out the Data Blast coming up next with some amazing work from Instagram. Check out the names of the creators, go give them a follow, because we love building and cultivating this awesome community. <sighs> <sighs> and until next time, keep displaying model behavior.